Good morning. Welcome to Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane. I'm Karen Barry Schwartz, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane can be heard here on Relevant Radio on 1410 AM and 106.7 FM in Fort Myers and 1660 AM and 93.3 FM in Naples on the last Friday of every month at 830 AM or anytime at dioceseofvenice.org slash Our Bishop. Your Excellency Bishop Duane, welcome back to Relevant Radio. Karen, thanks very much. It's great to be back with you and our listeners. Bishop, today the Church celebrates the memorials of Saints Joachim and Anne, parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What an important role they had. Of course, all parents have a very important role in life. And I've often heard you say that parents are the first and best teachers of the faith, which is an awesome responsibility for any parent. This morning, we're going to be talking about a parish catechetical summer camp for young people happening this summer here in the Diocese of Venice, which represents perhaps a helpful additional tool for parents as they take on that awesome responsibility. Perhaps you'd like to begin us off this morning with a prayer to Saints Joachim and Anne. I would do that. Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Anne and Saint Joachim. You were ever faithful to God, trusting in Him in your lives. And while you prayed for a child, your patience and perseverance in prayer are an example to us. We ask that you pray for us, that we may be ever faithful and trusting in God. May we always keep our focus on Him and trust in His timing. May we appreciate the faith of others like you and be inspired to a deeper faith. Saints Anne and Joaquin, thank you for your example of faith. Thank you for your wonderful daughter, our spiritual mother, Mary. Thank you for the love of God and the faith you inspire. As godparents of Jesus, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Karen, can I ask you a question before you go on? Did you know we have a chapel by that name here in the Diocese of Venice? We do. Down at St. Anne's Parish, their daily chapel or a smaller chapel, sometimes where a group will celebrate a Mass. The chapel's dedicated to Anne and Joaquin. Oh, how lovely. I did not know that. It's beautiful. To get. Sometime when you're down there, anybody yeah. who's down in that part near St. Anne's, go see the chapel. It's, it's done very well. Oh, beautiful. how nice. Beautiful. How appropriate for this day. Well, thank you for that beautiful prayer, Bishop. Parents of Mary and godparents, you said, of Jesus, Saints Joachim and Anne played an important role in our faith history. But now let's welcome this morning's guests. We have an embarrassment of riches this morning with three guests joining us to talk about the Diocese of Venice's parish catechetical summer camp, Totus Tuus. Joining us today are Andres Prius, the diocese's new youth and young adult director, Jesse Gomez, a seminarian for the Diocese of Venice, and Jesenia Cortez, a recent graduate of the University of Florida from Lake Placid, Florida. Actually, Andres and Jesse and Jesenia are all missionaries for the Diocese of Venice this summer, teaching totus to us camps at various parishes throughout the diocese. Welcome, all of you, and thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome to you all. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we're very excited. Bishop. Let's start with you. The Totus Tuus program began in 1987 as a vacation Bible school program in the Diocese of Wichita, Kansas, I believe. You brought it here to the Diocese of Venice in the summer of 2022. What is Totus Tuus? Why is it called that? Can you tell our listeners what it's all about? Well, the program really is a parish catechetical summer program, and that's what these individuals who are here today with us, they're working in it. But it's a program where individual parishes within the diocese host a week-long camp for a whole range of children, age range. They're concentrated at different times, but they're there together. It's called totos tuos. Totos tuos really means totally yours or all yours in the Latin greeting. And it was particularly that a greeting, which was routinely used to sign off letters written in Latin, often abbreviated as just T period, T period for the totos to us. In recent history, the phrase gained in a sense in popularity since it was used by Pope John Paul II, St. Pope John Paul II, as his personal motto to express his personal consecration of his life to Mary. 
And according to one of the apostolic letters that St. Pope John Paul II, he borrowed the motto from the Marian Consecration Prayer in a book that was, I think, written in, back in the early 1700s, a book about true devotion to Mary by Louise de Montfort. And so that's from where that comes. Andres, maybe you could start by talking a little bit more now that we know why it's called Totus Tuus or Totally Yours. What are the goals of this catechetical summer camp? Sure, Ken. Totus Tuus program seeks to develop a longing for holiness in our young people. Young people today have a lot of distractions, you know, with social media and all that is going on in the world today. It is easy to get caught up in worldly things. The Totus Tuus program helps young people focus on their faith and their relationship with Christ, teaching them lifelong lessons that they can carry with them forever and which can help them in other areas of their life. It's a week-long program for youth grades K through 12, and the curriculum is age-specific. It's a faith and fun-filled week where children may learn about the various parts of the Mass or may deepen their understanding of the Eucharist and the importance of the adoration given their age. It's a very powerful week with youth being able to have a shared experience of their faith with other like-minded children who are the same age. It's a powerful witness. Andreas, I think that was so powerful when you spoke about developing the young people's relationship with Christ. I think we always have to be attentive to that. And I think too often maybe, no, even in religious education, they're busy about working on, you know, recite this prayer, do this. And it's a relational thing. Holy Father, Pope Francis says over and over again, we have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So thanks very much for bringing that up. Yes, thank you, Andres. I'd like to ask Jacenia and Jesse about your experiences out there in the field, so to speak, of these. You've been at several parishes so far this summer, began in June, and will continue through the rest of the summer. So you're maybe at about the halfway point. What yes. are some of your favorite experiences with the kids, with the different age groups? It's a K through 12 program. Mm-hmm. And as Andres pointed out, you do different activities with the different ages, of course. But what are some of your favorite memories so far of having done this? Yes, Karen. So one of my favorite memories is after we have the classes teaching some of the fundamentals of the Christian faith, I'll ask the kids to draw a picture of what they learned that day. It's so cool for me to see how they put what they learned into their own experiences of their life and put that down on paper. So Andres was speaking and you, Bishop Duane, were speaking about a relationship with Christ. It's nice to see that the kids will draw pictures of, let's say, the gates of heaven or what they see heaven looking like. And they'll draw family members who are there or they'll draw themselves next to Jesus Christ, also next to beautiful images of the Virgin Mary. And they're doing this all with crayons and markers, but that was very touching for me. I'd be at a distinct advantage in that regard. I'm a terrible artist. (laughs) So tell me, how do you help the little one who just can't quite get there? Because that'd be me. Yeah, I tell them to just do the best they can to draw. We have different levels of ability in terms of artistry. I also tell them, if you don't like to color, you can write down what you learned. So some of them will write things and I'll walk by and they wrote in crayon like, I love God. That's beautiful. I love that. I'm afraid I would be in the same camp as Bishop with the stick figures there. (laughs) Not so good. Jessenia, how about you? Jesse did mention about the younger kids. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about the teens during the evening session. I found, especially as you guys mentioned earlier, how we have a relationship with God. A lot of the teens in the night program leave on Wednesday, Thursday evening. And I think that through adoration, through confession, through hearing all the testimonies, they've really have made that distinction that God isn't just a God that rules over us, but it is a father, somebody who cares for us, who cares for them, especially. A lot of the girls, especially since we work with the girls in the afternoon, they leave knowing that they are loved and that their primary vocation is to seek holiness. I love to hear that. I know, Bishop, we've talked before, I think when we had Father Belmonte as a guest and we were talking about Catholic education, about how it's so important that that children, especially the teens today, understand they have value, which is lost a lot today. And as you mentioned, Andres, with social Mm -hmm. media and so forth. I think we see out in our society so much people are used. 
persons are used. And I think when you talk to young people, they see that, and that impacts them deeply. And that's why I, I think, you know, you point out, you spoke about that holiness that they seek, and every one of us has a call to holiness. How do we respond to that? Some never quite get traction, if I can put it that way, in that response. Yeah, they're going to do this. They're going to, they're going to, they want to. Sometimes you just have to put that whole list aside and just pick one and do it and stick with it. I think your mentioning of that, the idea of holiness, continue to tell them they're called to be, each one of them, to be holy as God is. And we have to find the way to do that. Once again, each one of us, according to how the Lord has called us. Just you mentioned the, the older kids. I'm just curious, how do you keep them off their phones? That's a, big, that's a big challenge. I feel just because they're in a Totus Tuis camp, it's not that big of a distraction. And we've tried to create an environment where they feel welcomed and they feel seen. It hasn't really been a big problem with it. Wow, that's good to hear. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the structure of the program. I know it varies by age, certainly the curriculum, but there are five basic pillars of Totus Tuis. So I'd like to hear from each of you maybe a little bit about those five pillars that the curriculum is based on. Andres, do you want to start us off with, with one of the five pillars? Sure. As we talked about earlier, the Torres program aims to inspire young people all the way from kindergarten up through grade 12 to long for holiness, develop a deep desire of conversion, and personally renew their faith with a stronger prayer life. Through evangelization and catechesis, Torres II seeks to foster openness to the sacrifice and blessings of the various Christian vocations. The five pillars are the Eucharist, Mary and devotion, catechetical instruction, vocation, and discernment, and fun. The first one is the Eucharist. The Eucharist is an integral part of the Totus Tuus schedule. Prayer provides the structure, but the celebration of the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the source of the summit of the daily schedule. The Eucharist, let's just pause on that one for a minute. I, this, of course, we're in the midst of a national Eucharistic revival about the real presence. Mm-hmm. The real, has that come up in discussions with the with the kids, the real presence? Of course, yes. We talk about it because I think we need to be involved, not, not just the kids, their families. They need to know that we are living the celebration this year. So we invite them to, to see the Eucharist as a center of their lives, not, not just this year, all the life, but... Yes, it's very, very important to us to, to teach them yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the requirements, too, we ask of the local parish, that the priest is there. Now, you're doing a lot of the catechesis during the day. Masses, they mm-hmm. center the schedule. It happens every day. And I think that's great that you do that. You know, I think we have many families who not every week have the children at the Mass. So it's good that they do have that opportunity to come and be there during the week. Many of them never had that experience really during the week. And they have to know that Mass is available that receiving of the body and blood of Christ available every day to us. You are listening to Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane on Relevant Radio. I'm Karen Barry Schwartz, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane can be heard anytime at relevantradio.com and on the last Friday of each month at 8.30 a.m. on 1410 a.m. and 106.7 f.m. in Fort Myers and 1660 a.m and 93.3 FM in Naples, or anytime at dioceseofvenice.org slash ourbishop. I'd like to go back for a minute to these five pillars. We've talked about the Eucharist. I think Andres mentioned the next one was Marian devotion. What can one of you tell us about that? Yes, of course. I really enjoy especially how the first class of the day begins with the glorious mysteries. And so a lot of the kids, they know the glorious mystery, they know the title, but they're not very centered on why it is that we pray with the glorious mysteries or with any mystery in general. And so seeing them really truly get to see Mary as their mother and that Mary leads us to her son, Jesus, has been so special. That's great. And I know we were talking earlier before the show, many of our missionaries are bilingual. And in some of the Spanish communities, the rosary is said in both English and Spanish yes. for the children, yes. and they're responding to that. And really seeing them respond positively to that, how they really enjoy both, both speaking and praying in both languages. 
I think it's a great opportunity for the children. And Jacenia made an interesting point earlier, Bishop, which is that a lot of the young people want to speak English, even if they have live in a Spanish speaking household. They seem to want to speak English in, in school and, and out in the world. But Jacenia was saying she's learned that they pray in Spanish. Prayer is the important thing. There should be no qualification by language. Okay, they go to school every day. And in their school, most oftentimes the lessons are in English. So, of course, they know, and that's you develop a certain thought process. I had to learn two different times a language when I was older. It never gets easier. They're at a perfect age. They're sponges. They just pick it up, and it's perfect. But I want to go back to those gifts, those pillars. And I'm going to lean on Jesse for the next one. <laughs> Jesse, what's your favorite one? Pick out one. Yeah. My favorite pillar is probably the vocational discernment. Oh, he's a seminarian. He's just saying that because I'm here. Come on. <laughs> no, I really do no? like it. Okay. So on the Sunday evenings, I've been tasked with writing a, a speech to give to the teens. And the speech is about being open. So I have the chance as a seminarian to talk about my own experience of coming to the faith, developing a relationship with Jesus Christ, and then also that feeling of being called to enter the seminary, feeling called to the priesthood. And so I, I have the unique opportunity to share that with the teens. And then also during the day with, with the first through sixth graders, on the very last day, we actually get to talk about vocations with the kids. We talk about marriage and family life. We talk about becoming a monk or nun or consecrated single life. And then we're able to talk about the priesthood as well. It's amazing how much these kids already do know, but we just add to the amount of knowledge that they have and explain what each one means. You know, one of those other pillars, what is catechetical instruction? Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to ask, take turns answering this, either, either one of you or both of you, I guess what I would like. I was a teacher for a little while. I think we learn a great deal about ourselves when we teach. You think, well, I have to offer all that. I have to teach them. <laughs> you learn a lot from those kids out in front of you. Plus, you learn a lot when you yourself are put in that role. I think we're, how can I say it, better dealing with ourselves mm -hmm. and learning in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Any of that true for either of you? Oh, yeah. I have actually a, an experience at one of the parishes where I felt that the kids knew more than I did. <laughs> so it was, it was really nice sort of getting that wake-up call, like, it's not about you. Sometimes we tend to think about ourselves too much, whereas like we're here to serve them. Jesse, how about you? Yeah, I noticed a very similar thing is that the little kids ask very difficult questions sometimes, and it, it makes you go off of your curriculum sometimes. It's important to answer. They might ask a question like, is heaven invisible? Or what does heaven look like? And then I have to use maybe a little bit of scripture to describe what scripture says about heaven. And then also just say, sometimes we don't know. What do you think it looks like? <laughs> and they might also ask questions like, why would God allow the devil to do what he does? And so we have to sort of answer that in our own words. Yeah. You know, there are small people in front of you, to use the term, and, but their minds sometimes, and particularly their souls, mm -hmm. are to me, always striking. And I think both of you touched upon the fact how much they teach you mm -hmm. in the course of a day, just through their questions, maybe through their drawing or what they write. We ourselves as adults allow our souls to be open to that. It can be impactful. Now, there's just one pillar left. <laughs> Fun. Fun is a very important pillar because I think all the rest of the pillars are connected with this one <laughs> because they are learning about our Catholic faith, but they are having fun all the time in the classes. Obviously, we have the last day, a water day, they're using this shaving cream to <laughs> put into the missionaries on their heads, and it's really fun. But it's important to them to learn that the Catholic faith is connected with this pillar. You can be fun if you believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus is your friend. Jesus is close to you. Yes. That's a very important pillar in Totus Tus. I've seen a lot of fun videos. It's very hot down here in Florida this summer. As we all know, and there's lots uh -huh. of water balloons and water slides, uh -huh. and they're having uh -huh. a blast out there, it looks like. And Andreas, you touch on it well. We, we do a lot with faith sometimes, and we don't make it fun. We get up and we give mm -hmm. an hour lecture, or we get up and give our a homily sometimes. 
it needs a little laughter somewhere along the way. And I think we have to not in any way to degrade our faith or any principles of it, but just to know that sometimes we have to have fun about faith. And sometimes it's a serious matter. Don't misunderstand me. But I think unless we have fun in it, it becomes a little, not enough human when we're moving along. And I think at least when I've been at some of these camps, I've seen told us to us that the little ones are just jumping all over the place. They're having so much fun. You know, that's how, that's how faith should be. Bring us alive, not stifle us. And I, I like to see the kids having fun together because I think especially maybe for the older kids, it is powerful for them to have this experience of being with other faith-filled children. And they have a, a like experience and kind of living the faith together rather than maybe feeling like, gee, am I the only one believing in this or whatever with their classmates? It's nice to have that thing in common, I think, with people their own age. So I have a question for all of you. I don't know if anyone can answer this, but Bishop, we'll start with you. Is it working? Do you think the Totus to his program, I know we've brought it back for right. several years. You chose right. to bring it back because you heard, you heard from parents, right, saying it was they loved it. I heard from parents. Back. Most of all, it was like letters because yeah. I'm not out at all the parish where it was, which means somebody had to sit down and take the time, and they did. And they said, you know, I haven't seen my children be so excited about faith. I had no idea my children would learn what they did in one week's time. And I think they're referring to the little ones a lot of the time. Their expectation when their children get a little bit older, but to talk about the little ones, how they, they knew their prayers, they knew the mysteries of the rosary. And I think what you have to know is told us to as missionaries is the joy that you bring by your presence there, the witness you give, the excitement that you're coming out, you as young people, to that older audience in our diocese that sees you there. And I could see that when you were present at Epiphany Cathedral, when I had the Mass that day. They were concentrating on you. You might have thought, oh, that didn't make any difference. Oh, no, they were looking at every one of you. And I'm sure they thought, it's great to have young people like that here to pass on the faith. I love that. I, I think it is working. I don't know if you all can share with us some of the things you've seen with the kids. You've shared a lot of great stories with us about how this is working to change these children's and older children's relationships with Christ. One well, of the most beautiful things I have seen in these summer camps during these three years is to hear the, the kids and the teenagers to say, I want to be a missionary in the future. The kids uh, love this, they love the, the summer camp, they love the experience, but they want to be like you. They want to be in the place that you are right now. They want to be a missionary. That showed to me that they have a really good experience of Jesus Christ, because it's Jesus calling them to be part of this experience and to be witnesses of their love, his love. Of course, that, that, is, a, that is an important point. We, of course, work very hard to choose the missionaries yeah. for the program, and they are mm -hmm. role models for the children yeah. of all ages. And it, yeah. it sounds like they mm -hmm. are really looking what up to them. One of the most this year, and I'm not going to use any names. When I asked him about it, he said, oh, Bishop, it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but that also shows the effort that I think is going into it. And the, I don't want to say demands, but the encouragement that the children give. Come on, do more, mm -hmm. be more. Yeah. Well, I, I think it is good for kids. You know, they, they hear from priests, certainly, and their parents and the bishop. They see these young people out there with a deep love for Christ and relationship with Christ, and they look to them as role models, and they can really relate to them, I think. You and I are old, Karen. <laughs> Speak for yourself, <laughs> Bishop. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk just briefly before we wrap up here today about our missionaries who are with us today. And Andres, of course, is also our youth and young adult director, relatively mm -hmm. new to the role here for the diocese. But they all have special talents. Jesse is on his way to becoming a priest at seminary, and you're originally from Minnesota. I am. And he is studying right now at St. John Vianney College, and this is a, a summer assignment for Jesse. So we're, of course, thrilled to have him as a seminarian for the Diocese of Venice. Jessenia grew up in Lake Placid. She's very involved with St. James Catholic Church there and works in her family's landscaping business. She went to the University of Florida for horticulture, making things beautiful. And then Andres, our youth and young adult director, is a, a bishop, I don't know if you know this, is a Catholic musician and singer. And he has recordings on Spotify. He's quite talented. We were just listening to some before we started the show this morning. He's very, very, very talented. Well, we're blessed to have him here in the diocese working with the youth and to the missionaries, the two are here 
Please take it back to the others. We're grateful you chose to do this for a summer. You are a blessing for us. You're all into it now about halfway through the summer. You have been at several parishes, lots of different kids. How does your experience compare with what you thought it was going to be like when you were brought on board as missionaries for the program? You're all new to it this year, I think. How is it different? Is it the same as you thought it was going to be or different? So I tried not to come into this with any expectations. And I've been pleasantly surprised of how, how much we connect with the kids, with all the children, with the teens. Every single week when we arrive, we know nobody in the parish. And then we leave and it's like we're leaving a piece of us there, you know, because the kids, they love you so well. The director, like they love you so well. The volunteers, everybody. I mean, I've had kids like give me bracelets, say, they're like, no, I don't want you to go. And it's just so special seeing like how in just one week they are able to love you so well. You know, I don't know. That's beautiful. I love that. You're practically Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to agree with a lot of what Yesenia said. I'm also going to add to that how much I have grown closer to the communities and the kids there. I know during the holy hours that we had scheduled and even sitting with them at mass, I find myself praying a lot for them and for their families and all the parishioners there. That's what I really noticed for myself. I love that. How about you, Andres? One of the most beautiful things is to, to hear the teenagers say, because I, I asked them, what, what do you like the most during this week? And they said, the adoration. We had adorations on Tuesdays. I mean, this is a summer camp. We have a lot of icebreaker activities, skits, games, but they love the presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. They love to pray together. You know, we have the music. We have, actually, this year we have a great voices, great singers, Jenna, Annie, and Juliana, sorry, Sarah. That moment is a beautiful moment, a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And I love that. I love to have the kids in front of the, the Eucharist, praying and praising the Lord together. Yes. <laughs> That's great. And I understand you've been pressed to to service playing guitar a yes. little bit for, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> for the camps with your musical abilities. Mm -hmm. We're doubly lucky to have you in that role. Absolutely. I think we're just about out of time for our show this morning. As always, thank you to, of course, our host, to the Most Reverend Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice, and to our guests who have brought us encouraging news about the faith of our youth here in the Diocese of Venice. Thank you for leading our Totus Tuus camps this summer, all of you. And thank you for joining us today. Andres Prias, Director for Youth and Young Adults here in the Diocese of Venice. Jesse Gomez, Seminarian for the Diocese of Venice. And Jesenia Cortez, a missionary joining us for Totus Tuus this summer. Thank you all for your thoughts and insights this morning. I know that Bishop Duane and all of our guests joined me in asking all of our listeners this morning to pray for the continued success of our Totus Tuus program this summer here in the Diocese of Venice, and for all youth as they may continue to find and deepen a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that they may experience a longing for holiness. We'll be back at the end of August when we will hear from Bishop Duane about his recent pilgrimage to the National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, which he attended with about 60 pilgrims from the diocese. And in August, we'll also be talking about Amendment 4, the dangerous and misleading pro-abortion amendment that will appear on the ballot this fall. So be sure to tune in for that important discussion. Thank you for listening. Good morning and God bless. You have been listening to Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane. I'm Karen Barry Schwartz, Director of Communications for the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Witnessing Faith with Bishop Duane can be heard here on Relevant Radio on 1410 AM and 106.7 FM in Fort Myers, and 1660 AM and 93.3 FM in Naples on the last Friday of every month at 8.30 AM or anytime at dioceseofvenice.org slash ourbishop.